Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, Respect Graduate School's uh, YouTube channel. And uh, my name is Kemal Burak. Uh, I am a sociology PhD student at Emory University, and we have Dr. Adnan Aslan with us uh, to talk about his course uh, that will be offered uh, as part of Respect Graduate School's uh, curriculum uh, in two weeks' time. So, uh, with Dr. Aslan. Uh, we are going to talk about his uh, new class, uh, which is called uh, A Philosophical Approach to Religion. And uh, welcome, Dr. Aslan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me uh, briefly talk about you first. Uh, let me, so to say, summarize your biography. And okay, then uh, that's fine. Uh, I will ask some questions uh, about the class that you will be offering. Uh, in two weeks. Uh, so, Dr. So Dr. Aslan, uh, he was born uh, in Turkey. He's originally from Turkey, uh, and he received his education in Turkey and England at different uh, times. And he received uh, his uh, MA degree at King's College uh, in London uh, in 1990, and uh, his PhD in religious studies at Lancaster University, again in England, in 1995. And uh, he has published several uh, articles, scholarly articles and books, both in English and in Turkish. And his main interests uh, revolve around the issue of religious pluralism uh, in a religious dialogue, is Islam, uh, mod Islam and modernity, and perennial uh, philosophy. Uh, he uh, used to work uh, in... Uh, currently shut down universities in Turkey, including uh, Suleyman Shah University in Istanbul. He was the dean of uh, the humanities and social sciences department. And uh, he was also, now he, uh, he, he became an, uh, sorry, he was an adjunct professor at the Department of Philosophy at Notre Dame. And he's a uh, faculty associate at Indiana University of uh, South Bend. Uh, th thanks uh, for coming uh, again, Dr. Aslan. You are very welcome. So uh, I see that uh, you will be offering 10-week class uh, about the philosophical approach to religion. And uh, according to the schedule that you designed, each week you are going to talk about a different topic, and uh, including... Mm -hmm. Uh, the first week, uh, the introduction to the course and philosophy for religious life. So with this first first week, I also wanted to know more about you. Uh, what is the background of this uh, course? Uh, why did you Why did you decide to offer this course uh, under Respect Graduate School? Okay, thank you. It's a good question. So one of the important things, if you are religious or non-religious, uh, to justification of the faith. We need to justify what we believe. So how can we justify that? So in Islamic term, we say this Iman al tahqiqi So even philosophically or theologically speaking, generally, Iman al which you get, your, you, you receive from your parents and you follow it. So even some scholars says that that is not accepted. So mm. everybody, according to their own capacity, okay, they need to justify what they believe. So justification, a kind of thinking. Okay, if you are a simple man, you justify simply. If you are sophisticated, you have the educated man, you need to justify your, your belief in a very sophisticated way. So in our time, this is not the time of our prophet, peace be upon him. It is not the time, Ottoman time. Oh, we are living in a modern time. So there are many challenges, many challenges to the religious faith. So then, you know, justification, to reach the Iman Tahqiqi needs a kind of philosophical, philosophical justification. 
let me put it this way, philosophical reasoning. Okay, it mm -hmm. doesn't, you know, when I say philosophy, people immediately remember philosophy is, is Aristotle, philosophy is Descartes, is Kant, no. That is a philosophy, history of philosophy. Philosophy is a, is a, how can I put it? Okay, philosophy is a, a thinking, a rational and consistent and uh, reasonable, rational thinking. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, so what I see now from here, our people, Muslim, Christians, I see that some, they, they are not so much thinking about what they believe. So we are facing the many challenges. So what I am going to offer in this, in this course, two things. One is to brought out the challenges. Modern, modern world, modern philosophy is putting forward for us. Okay. So try to answer these challenges these issues, these problems in both way, from Islamic point of view, how can we answer that, okay? Or how the people, not the Muslims and the others, Christians, how they answer. So for instance, why the uh, agnostic and the atheists, why they believe, why they claim, okay? What is the relation between, okay, let me put it in the, in the in a, in a specific in a specific uh, issue, for instance, issue of uh, problem of evil. So you will see many people, many people, because of this problem of evil, they consider that there is no God. They don't believe. They they reject the faith, my dear. So this is the this is the main main issue. So. Our course, let me summarize and put it this way, has a two objectives. One is to stimulate, stimulate or to make you think, contemplate about your own faith in order to elevate you in a certain degree of religious justification, what we call it Iman al tahqiqi Is the second, we are facing many challenges. As a believer, we need to address these challenges. We cannot ignore them. We, we cannot, we cannot, you know, behave as if there is no challenges. There, there are many challenges from the science, from philosophy, from psychology, from everywhere. We need to face these challenges to answer properly. Okay, I know many people, many people young people, you know, educated people, they are living in this country, they have a mind, very chaotic mind. Why? Because of these challenges. You know, in this course, we are going to address these issues from the philosophical point of view and explain it well and saying that we are, if you are a believer, you need to be confident, my dear. You need to be confident that you are a believer. How can you become a confident? You see? To, 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 to justify your faith philosophically. And you will be very confident to talk to anybody. Because you, are, you, are, you already made your mind very well about the issues. You... you uh, sorry, okay. you mentioned that uh, it's important to use our brain, so to say. And yes. uh, some people I know that some uh, believers, they are a little bit suspicious about what uh, reasoning or what their mind tells them, even though, for example, according to Muslim holy book in the Quran in more than 100 times, Quran encourages believers to think, to contemplate, to reflect. So uh, I see that, uh, is it true that you are in a kind of, in a position to reconcile uh, mind and then the revelation, which is Wahi, 
uh, God's revelation. Uh, can, can can I make a yes. bold claim like that? Yes, yes. Okay. So it is faith and revelation or faith and reason. Okay, let me put it this way. Okay, so one of the important things we always relate or misunderstand philosophy because it comes from there. So when I, in Turkey, there is a, a very interesting image, very negative image of the philosophy. I don't know why, uh, but it is very much related with the unbelief, denying religion, or being sarcastic about the religion. Okay, uh, philosophy is very much related, you know, is kind of chaotic thinking. And uh, people, are, those who are, who are having some, some kind of psychological problems, they do philosophy. This is a misconception, misinterpretation of the philosophy. First, let us you know, make it clear that philosophy, because people think that philosophy is equal to the history of the philosophy. Okay, so again, let me repeat. When I say philosophy people, immediately under, you know, they remember philosophers. So philosophy is not that. Philosophy is a clear, rational, consistent thinking. So thinking <laughs> is very, very important for your religious life. What is the most important things in religious life? Is the intention, my dear, intention. There is a hadith, yes, very famous hadith. What you do, it comes with your intention. So the intention is the mental act. So you, if you intend, you start thinking, you see? So, in, in, in this case, we are, if we are truly believer, and if we are confident that we are believing a true, true belief, Islam is the last religion and, uh, and true religion. We should not worry about anything. We are responsible to, to, to represent such a thinking, Okay, so what I mean here, philosophy would help us to understand our own faith, which is important, to believe wholeheartedly and with thinking mind, what we call it in Iman Taktiki. Everybody has to reach Iman Taktiki with their own way. And thinking and justification plays the absolute crucial role in reaching in Iman Tahkiki. So here is the thinking. First, Iman Tahkiki. Okay? The others is the practicing, my dear. You need to be conscious what you are practicing. You need to justify what you are practicing again. It involves again with the with the with the thinking. So then our as you referred, our Quran, the holy book, refers a lot about the thinking, making, using our mind, using our cult, you know, using our all faculties, which make us to relate, which makes us to relate to the to the whole existence, which makes us relate to the, what we believe. So in that case, you know, this is a, this is not of course as a, is a, is a, a, a humble attempt to make people, to, to make them aware of their own position with regard to the, their faith, with regard to the, their, their, religion and practice. So that is why this is so important between what you said, faith and reason or faith and revelation. 
So these are the two things, okay, faith and faith and reason or revelation and the reason. So these two faculties or these two poles through which we can relate our own, let me say, our own religious attitude towards God, towards the nature. We cannot, we cannot really understand nature without, without using our reason. The sure. same is true. We cannot understand and relate ourselves with the, in a good faith without, without, without using the reason. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Dr. Aslan. Uh, I want to bring us to another topic, uh, which is mentioned uh, uh, as part of the syllabus, uh, and which we will be covering uh, in in week two, uh, which is uh, pluralism, inclusivism, and exclusivism. And uh, as you are very well aware, we are, and probably our audience as well, uh, we live in a very Uh, pluralistic society right now, uh, especially Western societies are more pluralistic. They are more uh, tolerant to other uh, faiths and uh, philosophies and even new religious movements. So what do you, uh, what is your take on the religious uh, pluralism, uh, especially for those uh, minority religion people, like, uh, for example, in the United States, the Jews, Muslims, and then Buddhist, Hindus, they, they all belong to the minority religion here in the United States, uh, but uh, they are part of the fabric of the society. Uh, what is your take on the uh, religious pluralism issue here? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, let me first say that we all generally, it is, it is that almost, 98% of the people, they will, they will get and they will adopt their parents' religion. So this is, this is very important issue. So it is the, let me put it this exclusivism, inclusivism first and the pluralism. Okay, what is exclusivism? Exclusivism is this, you know, So you born into the faith and let us imagine that a Christian person who became Christian because of his, his parents or her parents, and depending upon that, he claims as Christianity only true religion. Any person who's outside the Christianity, they cannot attain the salvation. They will be damned and they will go to the hell. This is an exclusivism. Okay, inclusivism is a little different from that. They claim their own religion is the only true, but other religion may represent some truth and they will also save salvation. They will also receive and update the salvation. So inclusivism doesn't exclude to the salvation in other religion. Okay, why I am talking about that? Because my friend, many people, they will challenge from these using that. They will, a, a friend of you, okay, in the college, he comes and says that, oh, you are Muslim. Yes, I am Christian. Why? Simple, because you born in Turkey, I born in, in the United States. So we cannot really claim truth depending upon our birth, We received our faith through birth and we, we claim the truth. So if person, uh, you know, challenges you and saying that, okay, because we always believe our religion depending upon our own tradition. If this is true, so Christian, they, they can claim the same thing. Jews, they can, they can claim the same thing. So what is the difference then? So this is a very, very important issue. You need to answer. You need to answer this question, these people. Okay, so then this is a, in a very philosophical way, we approach this. 
religious pluralism, exclusivism, inclusivism. So in this course, one of the most important issue, we are going to talk about that. And from the Islamic perspective, how can we defend how can we say, no, we are not the same position with the Christians and the Jews? If we are the same position, so there is no need to claim truth on our religion. So we are a different position. What is our different position? How can we defend that we received? Yes, that's true. We received our faith through our own family. That's true. No one denies that. But beyond that, what we have depend different from the other religion. How can we justify our faith, okay? Comparing with the other religion. What is the, let me say, priorities? Or let me put it, what is the, what makes the Islam more, let me say, more, more important or or represent more truth comparing with the others. These are the issues, okay? We are going to address that. When I'm, okay, about the religious pluralism. Okay, religious pluralism in philosophical way, it claims that not only one religion, the other religion also, they, uh, they lead, their own adherence to the salvation. According to pluralism, this is not, this is a religious pluralism, is a philosophical way, not sociological way. You are referring to sociological religious pluralism. I am going to come there as well. But let me put it this religious pluralism first in a philosophical way. There are many interesting philosophers on the great, uh, British philosopher called John Hick. Uh, my PhD thesis on him and the Sage Jane Nasta. And I met him several times. He was a very interesting person, very nice, great philosopher. And he developed a, a kind of pluralistic hypothesis and claiming that not only Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and Buddhism, five great tradition, the, they are represent in their own way truth and their adherence, their believers, they will go to the salvation. They will be saved, okay? They will be saved. This is, the, this is a philosophical religious pluralism. So it is, it is a background of the, the religious tolerance, my dear. If you, you don't know this, you cannot develop religious tolerance. If you are strictly exclusivist, you cannot develop religious, plural, religious tolerance. So religious tolerance, interreligious dialogue, and interreligious relationship, all this with comes this uh, background. What is the background? background is uh, considering other religion and thinking and you know evaluating them and to understanding them so these are important so when it comes to the sociological dimension of the pluralism we are living in a pluralistic world yes that is true so we we are obliged to understand Okay, we, we are making the dialogue with the, we are very eager to, to, to establish a dialogue between Christians and the Jews. But do, do, you, do we know about their faith, their belief? Do we study? No, this is, so our, our dialogue is becoming a kind of political, let me put it this way, a political, uh, gain or political gain, whatever put it in this. Okay, it has to be more than that. It comes. It 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 has to be to to lead us to understand, to understand them, and to allow them to understand us. So understanding very important for communication. 
communication is very important for establishing the good relationship. So to understand, you need to know, read, study, and not only read and study, also you need to think, contemplate about their faith, our faith. Then they compare. Then, you know, go beyond that, go beyond what is it then? To understand, communicate, and establish a good relationship. So we, as a Muslim, we are confident. We should be confident to establish the relationship with anybody, any faith, any non-faith, does it matter? True that they will, I mean, if, we, if our, our faith is strong enough, if we are justified very well, in our faith, we are we cannot be hesitant to communicate with the others. So then, our course in this respect, in this respect, makes you more confident about your own faith. So you will be very, let me say, you 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 will not hesitate to go and to talk and have a have a good communication and exchange of the ideas, exchange of the ideas. I think we should uh, defer some of these uh, beautiful discussions to your uh, class, which will start in two weeks. And uh, I, 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 because I want to bring us to another uh, topic, uh, which is another evergreen topic, uh, which you will cover on week five and it is called the problem of evil. And for those who don't know, uh, problem of evil is an age old question in philosophy. And uh, people say that, some people or argue that if there is God and if there is so many evil going on in the world, uh, number one, either God is impotent or not strong enough to prevent the evil, or number two, uh, God uh, is powerful, but he doesn't do anything about it. So he has some uh, ill intentions, they say. So in e either way, it is a, some kind of uh, rebellion to God, so to say, uh, which is in the spirit of the problem of evil. I want to ask this question with the things going on uh, in 2020, especially with the uh, coronavirus. For example, when we think about coronavirus, do you see it like a punishment from God or is it uh, human beings, their own uh, deeds or uh, is it something else? What do you think about uh, the uh, coronavirus and how should we react to these uh, disasters and uh, catastrophes or pandemics and all these things? Okay, thank you, good question especially relating to the, our issues, no current issues. Let me first start talking about the problem of evil. As you said, problem of evil, one of the most important issue in philosophy of religion. I have seen many people became, became agnostic, became atheist because of uh, uh, problem of evil. Okay, one of the issue, for instance, my friend is mentioned. He was saying that he was in the queue and going on the import on the, the restaurant and restaurant is a very famous people were queuing there. He was keen. And then he was talking about with his friend, his friend also philosophy, philosopher of religion. And they are talking about the, about the problem of evil. Suddenly a lady came there and she said, I was a believer, she said. I was attending the church, but when I see my mother dying from the cancer and I go through, I went through that pain and suffering. So I left, I left believing, I left church. I am not believing anymore. You will see many, many cases there. Okay, as you said, what they, 
what they say, okay, they say this, there are plenty evils in the world, plenty evils. They call, okay, we call it two kinds of evil. One is the evil made by the people. Okay, the, this are, the other is the natural disaster, like an earthquake, like a flood, okay, this kind of thing. Okay, so if there is God who is omnipotent, that means all powerful, and all benevolent, that means all, all loving, so God should have prevented all these evils. Why he have not prevented all? If he is not willing, they say, then he is not good because he is allowing the evil. If he cannot do that, then he is not all powerful. He is not omnipotent. So the evil they use for their own, let me say, justification of non-belief or disbelief. Okay, this is a very important issue as we are going to talk in our class. Okay, there are many answers for that. Many answers, very, very interesting answers. One of the best answers is, okay, one is this, is that it's a free will, it's called, okay. If God prevent the people not doing, not exercising their will, okay, people cannot be free. So people, when they exercise their will, they do bad things. People do that. Okay, this is not this is not fair, or it, it cannot be the way God works, or the the way our our universe is constructed. What does it mean? This so we do only good, but when it comes to the doing evil, and God interfere. Don't do that. Okay, okay. Let me put it this way, a very simple way. Okay, a person who intended to, to kill somebody, okay, go there and when he, you know, let me say fired and the fire does not, does not, you know, uh, it, it fails. So if you are thinking, this is not the, this is not the world human being can be free. So good and evil, in a sense, our, let me put it this way, is the fruit of terribly, terrible to say that, but is the fruit of our, our freedom. Most important things for the human being is, the, is his freedom. You see? And Said Nursi, great scholar and mystics, what he says, I can live without bread, but I cannot live without freedom. Okay, this is the most important thing. So the, the evil is a part of our life, has to be, because we are responsible. Then we cannot be responsible. There is no evil, there is no, nothing we can do as an evil, so we are not responsible. So it is a testing, this life is testing. So testing will be lifted if there is no evil. Okay, the other things, for instance, say that in order to know the, know the good, there has to be the something opposite. We know the things, concepts of the things which comparison, my dear, comparison. If you not, cannot compare, you cannot know. Nothing you cannot know. You need to compare. So the, the evil has a meaning Good has a meaning only when, when you compare with the evil. Okay, there are many other other issues. I am not going to, you know, we have the limited time and we can discuss this in the, the real time. But okay, this is one thing. And that's let me come to the, your second question. Okay. According to us and according to Quran, and it is true that everything, every single thing is made by God. 
Okay. So in the Quran, it is perfectly clear that our, okay, we cannot, we cannot really ascribe everything to do, you know, let me put it this way, is a material cause or immediate cause. So if you are ascribing everything, saying that this is of because of the immediate and material and visible cause, there is no difference between us and the positivist. So we believe beyond these causes, what is called material and visible and detectable causes, there is the, the cause of all causes. The cause of all causes. Mushabbubul asbab. The cause of all causes. Of course, Corona is also related with that. It is not, it is not, of course, we are not denying immediate cause. We cannot deny. We need to, we need to know immediate causes, material causes. So we need to, of course, protect ourselves. It is stupid, you know, to say that this is a, this is a, I mean, this is, of course, this is God, the God punishment, but you cannot really act, okay, that denying material causes. We need to appreciate and know that the material causes, we need to take the prevention very well, prevent ourselves, but in the, in, when you go beyond the material causes, everything, every single thing is related with the cause, the cause of all causes, the musabbubul asbab. So this COVID-19, of course, is, the, is related and it is, a, it is a made and it is a intended by God to, to our time. So why this is the case, there are many things, of course, but most important things, it is a time we are being tested in, in every respect. And you said being tested, and uh, it reminded me of one of the most beautiful examples from the Holy Scriptures about the suffering of the innocent or suffering of the righteous uh, is uh, about the, in the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament, we have the book of Job. Uh, yes. Job is Ayub. So basically, uh, there's a separate chapter in the Old Testament about the book of Job. And it shows us a very great example sometimes how an innocent and righteous person can suffer a lot, but still shows resilience and perseverance in the face of these uh, seemingly unjust uh, things. So I think... Uh, by reading, as you mentioned a couple of minutes ago, by studying and reading the Old Testament, and also when we also look at the Quran uh, at the same time, uh, when we do the parallel reading, uh, we see that these, uh, the same story also complements each other, I guess, right? Yes, yes, okay. So from the scriptures, from different traditions, what we say, we learn, of course, we learn, uh, we should learn. That was, I was referring, okay? In order to have the good communication, good relationship, we need to know their scriptures as well. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And we will, sometimes we will get some, some good information as long as it is fits with the Quran. Okay, so this extra information or extra knowledge make us available, make us very, let me say, fit to have the good communication and good relationship. And that is what we call it, okay, relationship between, you know, the inter-religious inter relationship, okay? That is very, very, very important. So. How can we, you said two important concepts. One is the, is the perseverance, okay? Related with the faith, related with, with the fighting with the evil. 
So even my dear, okay, calamities, they never detected a person. Okay, he is good and I am not coming to them. <laughs> he is bad, I will know. Everybody is respected. They can be tested. Sometimes believers and religious people test more. There is hadith about that, okay? So in this testing, okay, is how you test is the, the evil or let me put it calamities or sufferings are part of our testing. So perseverance, resilience and the perseverance. Perseverance is very patience is so crucial in order to fight with, with these calamities. After all, we don't believe that this world is only world. We should not weigh and we should not evaluate our action according to this, this world only. We believe that after this world is going to come another world hereafter. And the, this hereafter, my dear, is the main, main, let me say, main justification and the main point. We type our every action according to hereafter. And so the suffering in this world, if you gain the hereafter, congratulations. Happy, happy you are. Happy you are beating in this way. So that's why we are, we are more equipped with fighting with the sufferings. If you compare with the non-believer, a believer, a strong believer is, are more equipped with in fighting because of these concepts, for instance, you refer to perseverance, tawakkul, for instance, trust in God, belief in hereafter. And the reward, you will get the reward here, not necessarily, my dear, you will get the reward hereafter as well. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, you can, if you have any questions or comments, you can uh, put it on the chat box uh, during this uh, live stream on YouTube. And uh, when I see uh, the seventh week, it talks about science and religion. And this has been uh, always a hot topic, uh, the relationship between the uh, science and uh, religion. Uh, how are you going to tackle this issue uh, in, the, in the course uh, when, you offer, uh, when you offer this course? Okay, this is a very, very important issue and very uh, hot issue. Uh, there are certain, okay, the, the main things, okay, there are three or four important approach. One is that there is no Okay, one is science and religion conflicts. This is a one approach, okay. A thesis, there are many representative of that, okay. Especially positivist, they say science and religion conflicts, okay. The other is says there is no relation between science and religion because science is related with the observable things. Religion is related with the unobservable things, okay? So no relation, if there is no relation, there is no, there is no conflict, there is no connection. The third approach is that science and religion complements each other, complements each other. So these are the important uh, approaches for that. So uh, I would say, there are, there are certain truth of every approach, but not only one approach is correct. Okay, let me put it this way. One is this, okay. Religion is a, by essence, is a metaphysical. By essence, metaphysical. And science by essence is physical. This is a, most fundamental things 
What do I mean? Okay, metaphysical, that means goes beyond the physics. Observable, unobservable, unseen. Alemu ghaib and alemu shahadat. Okay, so exist the God, existence of God and attributes of God and the existence of the angels and the genes and the hereafters and the human side, especially when it is related with the soul and the spirit of the human being, all these is metaphysical existence entities, metaphysical entities. So science cannot say anything about that because one of the important condition, anything science would say is it has to be observable. To certain extent, you need to, you need to do experiment on that to, to say that. Okay, this is, this is one issue. So, so interference, okay, interference is, is, cannot go from this side to the others. What does it mean this? You know, for instance, if a person, that is very important, very interesting, interesting example, uh, surgeon, okay, he's doing surgery every day and he's saying that, oh, I, I know the human body. There is no spirit at all. So this is goes beyond the science because you're, your, you know, uh, area of uh, doing and thinking is only related with the, with the observable side of the human being. Okay. But let us put it this way. If, if the religion, let us say scriptures, talk about the, the certain issues, let me say the creation of the world or the nature of the universe. So then the, the scriptures making a scientific claim, science would test this claim, would say something, then, then comes to the relations and the conflict. So, for instance, Old Testament is a token, uh, you know, the Genesis in Genesis about the creation of the world, but they are taking it literally and it is totally against the, the scientific, scientific, let me say, uh, facts, scientific facts. So it is established how to, how we know how, how it is created the world. But uh, here in the Quran is more, let me say, flexible and advantages. There is very interesting book by Maurice Bucaille, a French, a French physician. He wrote the book about the science according to Quran and the uh, Bible and Old Testament is, uh, is comparing the scientific claims, these, these three great books, the scriptures, comparing that. So in that case, you know, when you come to the, that, that, okay, I am no, in, in comparing in this, I am so, uh, let me say, in line, in line to accepting in a certain extent that science and religion complement each other, complement each other in a certain extent. So, so even, even I will claim very confidently that scientific claim in the Quran is a proof or evidence for the sacredness and the, the Quran is revealed. Because let me put it one example. Quran is all apparently talks about the expansion of the universe. And this is a scientific fact. 
is very newly established before no one knows that. So this effect, which is impossible to know this fact before, and Quran obviously made that and says that the universe is expanding. So science is proving Quranic statement. Then this proof is the proof of Quran comes from the God who knows everything. So science even can be used as an evidence, which I use as an evidence for the for the truth of the of the of the Quran or the evidence that Quran is revealed from the heaven, from the God. It is not just, you know, is a person, his, you know, his own publication. Uh, be, we have a question uh, by one of our audience uh, on YouTube. And uh, they asked, they, uh, here's the question. Uh, why are we being tested? So it will take us to the previous topic. So, you know, you mentioned uh, we are being tested by God. We have our own limited free will. But on the other hand, you know, there is this uh, potential kind of uh, opposition or objection, uh, which argues that we should also answer or address to this uh, question. Then why are we being tested? What is your okay. response to that? Very, very good question. Very good question. Okay. So one thing, okay, let us, let us deny that we are not tested at all. There is no testing at all. So how can we approach to the evils and the calamities? How can we approach? We are very weak because we think that this is a, you know, this is, this is not Okay, there is no reward for that. Everything is here. Okay, so you, we are very vulnerable. We became very vulnerable against these kind of things. Okay, that's one thing. Okay, when we put it this, if it is testing, so that means there is a reward because after test, what do you have? When you pass, you have reward. So the reward is a, a part of fighting that makes us fight to, against, the, against the calamities. So testing concept is, a, is one important aspect of the testing concept is that it makes us to, to fight Okay, to equip us to fight against the cal calamities and the sufferings and other things. This is one important thing. The second important thing, testing is a, a character building. Okay, if you, if you want to have a good body, my dear, you need to do some practice. <laughs> Why are you doing practice? Don't do that. Be lazy, eat more, become fat. So what happens? So you go and you walk, you jog, and you do. You go to the gym and you, you know, you do very hard, difficult <laughs> things, and you sweat a lot. And so, why you are doing all this? Are you torturing yourself? No, of course not. Okay, you are testing your body. Why? Against the, against the diseases. Viruses, microbes, you are testing, you are, this is like that, okay? Testing, in a sense, okay, make us to character building and make us a good character. Through this testing, like you are doing physical testing to build your body very well against the fight, against the, against the, viruses and the illnesses, we are building our spiritual character or personality to fight against the 
evils and the bad things or to accept the good things. Through testing, we become a good person, a nice person. And then you will see, you know, a lot of people, if you see a very, very good people, go and search their life. They have been tested very, very difficultly. I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. One of my friends, and he was very, he became very easygoing and very nice person. And he's not, he's not easily, easily become angry and upset. I was very, I was a little shocked. I asked what has happened to you, but I didn't know because we didn't see each other. And he had a, 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 a child and he became a cancer and died from on that illnesses. Through that testing, okay, he changed a lot. He built a very, very good attitude. So this is extreme, extreme example. But I will tell you, this is almost certain. If you see a good character, definitely you will see behind that a very interesting experience. Uh, thank you, Dr. Aslan. Uh, there was one more question on YouTube and uh, we are approaching uh, one hour uh, limit, so to say, unofficial limit. And uh, uh, with your permission, I would like to uh, finish by asking this question and uh, one okay. audience was asking uh, many criticisms for religions are about sexism uh, is it going to be part of uh, this lecture or this course uh, the sexism okay uh, well this course has been philosophical approach to the religion uh, I never thought about that, but I should think about that. It is not going to be one of the past. Okay, we are having or 10 or eight, eight weeks, and I didn't put any anything about, uh, about uh, gender and a kind of this approach. But in, in philosophical way, I mean, philosophical approach to religion, gender doesn't come in. I mean, you cannot see any any issue in the philosophy of religion. I go to the uh, search to the book, but gender it is more related with the with the with the sociological uh, perspective and sociological approach to the religion. Ours is the philosophical approach to the religion. We are so much about to the existence of God. For instance, we are going to talk about the existence of God, and we are. We are going to examine the, 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 the arguments for existence of God. And we are going to talk about the justification of the religious faith. And we are going to talk about religious experience, which is very, very important. We, don't, we did not have the time to talk. We are going to talk in this course is the immortality, which is crucial. If you put all this, Gender is a is not really issue. It fits here. We are going to talk about the immortality, existence of God, and problem of evil, and you know, and problem of you know pluralism, pluralism justification of the faith, and so on and so forth. So our concern here, what is the most important things? Okay, so that God, world, and the human being. We connect all this. This is about the connection, okay? God, Lord, and the human being. So gender doesn't fit here. It, it doesn't come here. Yes, you're right. And uh, I used to teach a class called uh, Hot Topics in Islam. And uh, we I remember covering this for two weeks. I even uh, invited a a female Muslim speaker to talk about or to address some of the gender related issues. So I think if I uh, need to reopen this class in the future, I will definitely include gender related issues. As you know, we okay. socialize gender a lot. So let me finish here. But before we finish, uh, Dr. Aslan, uh, let me 
uh, make a quick announcement again about your uh, class uh, as part of the Respect Graduate School's uh, offerings or uh, our Respect Graduate School Scholar Series. So Dr. Aslan will be teaching a philosophical approach to religion between September 15 and November 17. And as Dr. Aslan said, uh, it will be a 10-week class which, which will include uh, religious pluralism, the problem of evil, science and religion, uh, arguments from the science like intelligent design and fine-tuning argument, religious experience, immortality, and so forth and so on. So this will be a very uh, loaded class, and uh, I definitely recommend you to uh, register. It will be every Tuesday uh, night uh, between uh, 7.30 uh, to 9 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, the website for if you want to read more about this course and register, it is Respect GS, GS, which is graduate school, respectgs.us slash philosophical approach. And between philosophical and approach, there is a dash. So again, let me repeat, respectgs.us, which is the Respect Graduate School's uh, website address, and then slash uh, philosophical uh, dash approach, and you will uh, have more information uh, about the class. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Aslan, for joining well, today. Welcome. I am going to say only one thing, we, which I in the class we have the uh, uh, the class is going to be, you know, to to mutually mutually discussing. Okay, interactive. So this is the nature of our class is going to be a lot of fun and we discuss the issues, but not I am talking only and also citizens will raise the, the issue. So interactive class, don't forget that. That's excellent news uh, because we have the good news of uh, having an interactive class. So guys, uh, feel free to uh, get enrolled, get registered uh, and the, as uh, I said a couple of minutes ago, the class will start in like almost in two weeks uh, on September 15, uh, which is a Tuesday night, 7.30 to 9 p.m. I, I hope you can join and uh, have a chance to learn from one of the experts in the fields uh, in Dr. Aslan. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today, you are Dr. Very Aslan. You're welcome. Thank you for, for, uh, for this, uh, you know, nice talking and good questions. Thank you so much. And I, I believe You're I learned welcome. a lot from you today and uh, uh, we are looking forward to the class. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.